I came to announce to you tonight that you are loosed already. Every chain, every shackle, every bondage, anything, everything that binds you, you are loosed tonight in Jesus' name. Father, well, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your purpose. Thank you for your plan. Thank you for everything you are going to do tonight. Lord, I pray that power that says everyone free will be manifested tonight in Jesus' name. Free from sin. Free from Satan. Free from sickness. See, free from every form and every kind of bondage in every life tonight in Jesus name you've done it before you're doing it again for everyone thank you Lord in Jesus name we pray God bless you you can see them we're coming to Acts of the Apostles chapter 16 and I'm reading from verse 23 and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. And then in verse 24, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison. And made their feet fast in the stocks. Verse 25. And at midnight of their suffering. At the midnight of their sorrow. At the midnight their feet in stocks. At the midnight with all the chains and the shackles binding them. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed. No grumbling, no complaint, no murmuring, no question. Why me? Why did this happen? It's there, it's there. What you need is solution. All the why, all the how, all the why is it me? I've been going through life and look at what I have now, all that. Let's stop all that, push all that aside. No complaint tonight. There will be kill. There is no murmuring tonight. There will be miracle. And there is no discussion or debate tonight. There will be deliverance in Jesus name. At midnight Paul and Silas prayed. And sent praises unto God. And the prisoners had them. Look at verse 26. And suddenly. Your miracle will come. And suddenly, your deliverance will come. And suddenly, healing tonight in Jesus' name. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaking. The foundation of your prison was shaking tonight. And immediately, all the doors were opened. Doors are open to you now. Every door that has been closed in your life, your family, your profession, in your desires, all those doors, they are open tonight in Jesus' name. Look at this last line. This is where we are going. And everyone's bands were loosed. 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 All your bands loose tonight in Jesus' name. I come to talk to you tonight on the prayer that makes everyone's bands loose. No exception. On the right, on the left, at the back, in front, online, everywhere. No exception. Everyone's bands loose. The sick. The tormented, the traumatized, the one that is sick in mind, sick in the brain, sick in the soul, sick in the body. No exception tonight. Everyone's bands loosed. 
They weren't tied by legal powers. They weren't tied by occultic power. And they weren't tied by physical power. And the people tied by personal, uh, personal choice. Everyone, no exception tonight. Everyone's minds loosed. The prayer that makes everyone's bands loose. Three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the prayer. Number two, we're looking at the praises. Number three, we're looking at the promise. Number one is the prayer of the righteous that loses everyone's bands. The prayer of the righteous tonight that loses everyone's bands. Number two, the praises. Of the, rede of the redeemed that loose from uh, every bondage. Every bondage in your life, tonight you are loosed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Number three is the promise to the repentant that liberates everyone who believes the promise of the to the repentant. It says that liberates everyone that believes. Number one. Look at number one. Number one is the prayer of the righteous that loses everyone's bands. Now, when we read the Bible, we should look at what it says sometimes. It's too good to be true. Sometimes it's unexpected unprecedented and because of that we leave that and we're still following our thoughts we're still following our tradition we're still following our past history but let there be a new sight tonight a new understanding tonight and a new believing tonight and you are free in jesus name number one is the prayer of the righteous that loses everyone's, everyone's, everyone's bands. We're looking at Acts again, chapter 16. I'm reading from that verse 23. It says, And when they had laid many stripes on them, they had stripes, they had wounds, they had pain, and they had plague, they had sickness. Because they had laid many strides upon them. Here we are. We've been going through life. And as we look at, you know, children, even the government provides hospital for children. Why? From infancy, we have stripes upon us. And then we become teenagers. And how many teenagers and the hospital be dreading? We have stripes. It's all through life. And then we pass out of school. And our certificate will not tell, does not have the authority, whatever the degree, first class certificate does not have any authority over strife, over sickness to say, I'm a graduate because I'm a graduate. No, life does not work that way. The graduate certificate, BSc, BA, whatever, it does not shield us from the strives of the world. And now we're working and we're managers, we're directors, we're highly placed and we get big, big money at the end of the month. And the big money does not shield us from the strives in this world everyone that passes through the world except to discover the secret of the one by whose stripes were healed everyone has the many stripes many of many colors of many shape of many of many directions and they come from here they come from there not only paul and silas we have many stripes upon us. And it says they cast them into prison. Now you understand that Paul and Silas were to be on the go. They were to be on the move. They were to be progressing from city to city. Now all that progress is stopped because they cast them into prison and they bound them and it says they charged the philippian jailer to keep them safely i about what were to do tomorrow 
Keep them safely. How about the progress in our lives? Keep them, uh, keep them safely in life. We have dreams, we have intentions, and we have the kind of the place we want to go. And we even have the strategy to get us there. But the people of the world in authority, not only authority over the ground, authority over the streets, authority over the buildings, they want to have authority, total authority over us. I have a dream. They say, hey, what's my concern with that? I want to make progress. What's my concern with that? And then you are shut up. And that's why Christ has come. That every prison tonight will be opened. And all the places, the people of the world, they put you there so that you will not get to where you are going. I say, on your life, Satan is a liar. I say on your life, the world is a liar. And if they think you will be in that prison for long, for life, and you will not achieve what you are created for, I call them liars. I say you are coming out of that prison. You are coming out of that bondage. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, who were having received such charge. Now, the jailer had not met Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas did not offend him, but he had a charge, a command. They said, don't ask us what he did. Don't ask us why. All we want is that he should bind them. And keep them safe in there. They must not go out. They are prisoners. What did they do? Don't ask questions. Why are we treating them like that? Don't ask questions. You know, Satan hands over many people to the jailer. To the one that will hold them there. And those people cannot ask Satan what has he done? Don't ask question. Keep him. He must not pro make progress. What? For how long? Don't ask that question. Keep him. Because he must not go beyond the limitation we put on him. What are we going to do? When they hand you over to the powers that be, when they hand you over to the dark powers, to the occultic powers, when they hand you over to the people that walk in night, and they walk with this and that, and there you are. And they lock the door. Your mother cannot come, your father cannot come, your friends cannot come, nobody can visit you. You are there at their mercy. But no, 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 no. You are delivered in Jesus' name. Uh, look at this. And he made their feet fast in the stocks. He locked up their feet. And there was no key that could open that padlock. How could they even find key? They were there. And they were so locked up there. The doors were locked. The stocks were lost. The chains were locked. And there was no way they could go out and go and buy anything. What would they be looking at? They were there. They were there. But when heaven says no to the plan of the devil, Satan will be the fool and you will be the wise. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, and at midnight, now you begin to think, what should we do? Here I am Paul, here I am Silas, and here we are. And the place is so dark. And they didn't give them any light. They were to treat them as the worst offenders on earth. And then, if you were there, what would you have done? Maybe you'll be crying. Paul did not cry. You'll not cry again. Maybe you'll be regretting. Why did I believe in Christ? 
And why did I cast out that spirit of divination? I was trying to help her. I was trying to help their family. And look at where it has landed me. And some people will say, if I come out of this place, I will never preach again. No, you will preach again. You will preach again. Why do tests and trials come in our lives? The test came so that you will have testimony. Why do problems come in our lives? The problem came so that you can have power manifestation. It's not there so that you'll be regretting forever and ever. And Paul and Silas knew that. And Paul and Silas prayed. Say, pray. You know, as some people after hearing the message before the prayer, they run away. Today, you will not run away. Because we're going to pray tonight. And the prayer tonight will set you free. Will liberate you. Will destroy all the powers of darkness in your life in Jesus' name. Because, you know, we're not only here to preach. We're here so that we'll fulfill what the Lord had said. Lose him and let him go. That's why if until that happens, stay where you are. Miracle is coming. Healing is coming. Deliverance is coming. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, and suddenly they had not finished the prayer. And suddenly, I said they had not finished the prayer. Suddenly, your miracle will come to you. Having a crusade, she crusaded like this in Lagos some years ago. And many people were there, just like tonight. And there was a boy there. The mother brought the boy. The problem was the boy had no bone in one of the legs, just flesh, like rubber. And the boy, well, he had one good leg, and then the other leg, no bones at all, from the hip to the, to the ankle. No bone. And he, used, he was using one other stick, and he'll wind that rubber uh, leg on uh, the stick. And then we were praying, praying, praying. We had not even finished the prayer. We had not said, in Jesus' name, I pray. We have not said the final amen. And there was shout. And the mother came out, dancing, was still praying. And then when we eventually opened our eyes, what happened? Suddenly, bone was created in that fleshly leg. And the boy started walking majestically because suddenly a miracle happened. Suddenly a miracle happens to you today. And it says suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately, somebody shout immediately immediately all the doors were opened all the doors all the doors the door to the west to the east to the south to the north the door in every direction all the doors that were there that had been locked closed so that nobody will go out all the doors were open and it says every one's Bands were loosed. Everyone's bands. What does everyone mean? Are you there? Are you part of everyone? You are loose tonight in Jesus' name. Before I go to point number two, everyone's bands were loosed. Everyone. The men, the women, the young. The old, the ones who have been there for a long time, and the ones who just came, everyone's bands loosed. 
my submission to you is although their bands were loose they didn't act it out they didn't act like that they stayed there and when the philippian jailer came and he thought everyone would have done the normal thing because they were all loose they all remained there the philippian jailer wanted to kill himself and paul said hold it they are all there their bands were loose they were all there the chains were broken they are all there and everything that tied them down and stuck them down everything taken away and they were still all there how many people after we pray and we say the final amen and power comes from heaven and they are loosed they still sit there on the wheelchair and they're loose they're still holding on to their crutches they're loose and they're still holding on to their ear ear whatever uh, you know aid for their ears they're loose and they're still holding on to the things they're loose from tonight when you are loose you get up you will walk you will run I was seeing uh, it you we used to call the place uh, the country Zaire and uh, it's the Democratic Republic of Congo now we're having a crusade there at the stadium and there was a woman there that uh, had HIV AIDS she was like skeleton and she was there and we prayed after the prayer everybody said amen the woman was just lying there and then after as the people were going no usher went there no preacher went there i did not go there already we have released the power and the woman was loose all of a sudden when he saw the people were going he looked here and there he got up from that bed and then he started walking and he started running because at the mention of the name of Jesus, everyone's bands will be loosed. All you need to do is get up. You will get up. All you need to do is walk. You will walk. All you need to do is begin to run and the power of the Lord will sustain you in Jesus' name. At the prayer of the righteous mentioning the name of jesus everyone's bands were loosed it's happening tonight look at james chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 15 james chapter 5 reading from verse 15 and the prayer of faith shall save the sick when we pray here what kind of prayer do you think we're praying? Prayer of faith or prayer of unbelief? Say it aloud. Uh -huh. And it says the prayer of faith never fails. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, heal the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. Amen. As the Lord raises you up, you're not holding on to the edges of the wheelchair anymore. Lose that and come up. Because the Lord will raise you up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Your sins will be forgiven tonight. All the evil things you have done. Every evil thing, whether man knows it or not. Every evil thing, every sinful action that is recorded in heaven against your name, everything is forgiven tonight. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, confess your faults one to another. When you stand up there and you know you have any condemnation, any guilt on your life, say, Lord, I'm sorry. And if I need to go and say sorry to the person I offended, I'll say sorry because now with that word sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry for that. Your salvation is guaranteed in Jesus' name. And then it says that if, 
that you pray one for another that ye may be healed the effectual fervent prayer the effectual fervent prayer we pray each in the night like Paul and Silas or we pray each in the afternoon like Paul and Silas or we pray in the morning it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much availeth much my prayer for you tonight will avail much deep sickness there will be a deeper healing great sickness there will be a greater healing because the prayer of the righteous availeth much we're coming to point number two now point number two the praises of the redeemed that loose from every bondage every bondage let's come back to that acts chapter 16 verse 25 and at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god and the prisoners heard them once you're here the prisoners heard them the captives heard them the sick at them the incarcerated heard them they heard the prayer they heard the praises and think about that when do we praise god we praise god at all times we praise god before the manifestation we praise God at the time of the manifestation. We praise God after the manifestation. Why do we praise God before the manifestation? We're praising God because we know what he will do. We're saying, God, you can never fail. And today you will not fail. In my case, in your case, he will not fail. If you had been crying and shedding tears before you came to the crusade, the moment you enter, your tears will turn you to joy. Yeah. And your sorrow will turn to gladness. No sadness anymore and no sorrow anymore and no weeping or crying anymore. But who have not prayed, yes, I know God is a faithful God. I am praising God for what I know he will do. Before the manifestation, we're praising God. In the middle of the manifestation, we're praising God. Why? Because of what he is doing for us. Because of what he will do. That's why we're praising God. That's why we're happy. That's why we know everyone's bands lose. And because I know I am part of that, everyone. And my bands are loose today. Even before the manifestation, I'm praising God. In the middle of the manifestation, there was an earthquake. And then it says, it so happened that everyone's bands were loose. I'm praising God. While I'm seeing that manifestation is taking place, I'm feeling strength in my backbone. I'm feeling strength in my arm that I couldn't stretch before. I'm feeling light coming into my eyes. I'm in the middle of the manifestation and I'm feeling the joy in my heart that God is manifesting it now. That's why I'm praising the Lord. Before the manifestation, you praise the Lord. In the middle of the manifestation, you're praising the Lord. And then uh, when you come to the other side, now you are no more in the wheelchair, you are standing. Now you are no more under the power and the help of the crutches. The crutches are over there and they are thrown away and you are standing and you are walking like me. I said you are standing and walking like me. Now that it has taken place, we keep on praising the Lord. That's why we come out and we're coming out. We're not coming out as if I have to come out there. I want to talk to the you know crowd there. We're so happy we have something to tell the crowd. We're so happy we have a testimony to give before, during, and after. We praise the Lord. That's why Paul and Silas sang, Praises unto God. And the prisoners 
hurt them. Look at verse 26. And it says, suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. It's while you are singing those praises. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. If you had great imprisonment, great earthquake will come and blow everything away in Jesus' name. You have a great problem, great earthquake will come, and all those great problems tonight, they're blown away from your life in Jesus' name. It says, so that, so that, so that the foundations in the plural, the foundations of the prison were shaking. They're shaking already. I said they are shaking already. The foundation of where your bondage came from is shaking already. The foundation of where the curse came from is shaking already. The foundation of that cancer is shaking already. The foundation of that impossible situation is shaking already. And then it says, and immediately and immediately and immediately all the doors were open the doors what does that mean the door over here to my right where the square members are the doors are open the doors over there where our children are from the Deeper Life High School, the doors are now open. The doors in my front and the doors on this side here, all the doors are now open. The doors at the back, anywhere you are, the doors are open in Jesus' name. On the platform here, to my left, to my right, we have ministers, professionals, dignitaries, government officials. Here on the platform, the doors are now open. It says, and immediately, immediately, okay, I'm here today. I'll come back tomorrow. And no, not tomorrow. It's cash and carry. Cash and carry. You will carry miracles out of this place tonight in Jesus' name. And it says, everyone's burns or lose. I feel it. I feel it as I'm here. I sense it as I'm here. In my spirit, in my spirit, I see you there. And I see your burns loosed. I see your chains broken. I see those blind eyes. I can see. I can see there spiritually that your blind eyes are open in Jesus' name. I can see it. Look at that man. Look at that. Or, uh, you know, in Onicha some um, years ago. And uh, they, they were having, you know, miracle night. Miracle night. And they brought this man. They changed the hands. And they put padlock. And they chained the feet. And they put padlock. Why? The man was insane. The man had real powerful demons tormenting him. And they brought him there. Our state overseer there. He's still the state, state overseer in Imo State now. He will remember. And as they brought uh, that uh, person, all changed up. And while I was preaching, I didn't see him in the physical. I saw him in the spiritual. And I knew that his yoke was going to be broken that night. And then we prayed. And after the prayer, we opened our eyes. And the man said, why do they put chains on my hand? And then he said, come and remove your chain. And the people came, they opened the padlock, and they opened, uh, and they removed the chain. He said, I about my leg. And they removed the chains on the legs. And the man walked out to give testimony. And that man, I still remember, Queen's English. The man spoke perfect English. And he said, this happened, that happened, but now I am free. It's your turn tonight. I said it's your turn tonight. You are free in Jesus' name. And it says, 
as they praised the Lord that all the doors were open and everyone's bands loosed. That's me. That's me. You're free tonight in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 22, and I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 22, verse 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. When you are praising the Lord from your heart, and you forget about sickness, you forget about sin, you forget about shackles, when you are praising the Lord from the depth of your heart, the Almighty comes from heaven. He inhabits the praises of his children. And as you are shouting with joy, with happiness, with expectation, expect him manifestation, God is here now. He inhabits the praises, the joy, the happiness, the gladness of his people. There's no way, there's no way you'll carry sickness out of this place tonight. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, the promise to the repentant that liberates, that, um, to the repentant that liberates everyone who believes. I believe. I believe. Acts of the Apostles chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 30. Acts chapter 16 verse 30. And he brought them out the Philippian jailer. The one that put bands on their feet. Now he saw that his bands were not approved of God. He saw that the, uh, the bands and the stock and the yoke he put on them, he himself, the yoke maker, the yoke placer, who placed the yoke there, he saw what he put on them, God removed. What he put on you, God will remove. And eventually, he himself, he came, he said, sirs, he called them sir. He honored them. He respected them. Your enemies that put yokes on you. When they see now, you're free. They look at you from the back. They look at you from the sides. They run to the front. They look at you and they see that you're walking. No sickness. No plague. No chase. Free. Your brain free. Your eyes free. Your ears free. Your feet free. And they look at you. They say, that's the man. That's the woman. I bound him. I bound her. But she is free. Then they will say, sir. They will call you sir. They will say, madam. They will call you madam. They will not look down at you anymore. Because a power higher than their power. A high power greater than their power. Has come to set you free. What must I do to be saved? You have something I don't have. You have salvation which I don't have. I want to have what you have. Your enemies will come. They will say, I see a kind of joy in your life I've never seen anywhere. What do I do? That I may have the joy of salvation like you have. Amen. Amen. Your enemies will envy you. What must I do to be saved? Look at verse 31. They said, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And thou shalt be saved. And thou shalt be saved. Now, they went beyond the question, What must I do to be saved? They said, In fact, you will be saved and your household will be saved. Your brother will be saved. Your sister will be saved. Your mother will be saved. 
Your daddy will be saved. They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved and thine house. Amen. Let me show you something. In this same chapter, verse 35 now, verse 35, verse 35, it says in verse 35, and when it was day, remember that that opening of the doors in the prison happened in the night. At midnight, they prayed and they sang praises to God. And remember, all the things that had happened happened in the night and when it was now morning the magistrate sent to the sergeant they sent the sergeant saying let those men go let those men go they didn't have to do any other thing the lord has done everything for you Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises to the Lord and the prison doors were open and the foundations of the prison shaking and everyone's bands loosed and while did Paul and Silas still remain there because they were to give salvation the word of salvation the message of salvation to the Philippian jailer himself and to his household and after that when they were minding their business and when they knew that everything was over that all your problems are over and they knew that all the chains were broken and without asking anything without paying any money without consulting with anybody the magistrates on their own the scene in their heart the kind of uh, you know punishment will, will punish them they will realize that they never preach christ or pray in the name of christ anymore the chain in their own mind was also loose and the same sergeant saying let those men go look at verse 36 in verse 36 and the keeper of the prison told saying to Paul the magistrates have sent to let you go and I came to announce to you all the powers that bound you they have now realized that they cannot do anything against what Christ has fi finished at Calvary and then I'm saying to you now like the sergeants like the majestic power of God from heaven has now sent me to tell you now you can go free now your chains are broken now the shackles are broken the search the magistrate have sent to let you go now therefore depart and go in peace what you say there depart and go in peace peace in your heart peace in your life sickness gone sin forgiven power broken manifestation in your life now brother you can go free sister now you can go free even the magistrates have said they have said there is no reason to keep you in that prison anymore since heaven has come and has loosed you and you are free we also agree go out free yeah. who is free tonight i said who is free tonight you're free in jesus name it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed he'll free you from the chain of sinfulness you didn't say amen to that one he'll forgive your sin he'll take guilt away from you he'll take condemnation away from you he will give you the salvation of the lord anywhere you are not sin the sincere now there's a great miracle salvation moment in your life 
that you know you are a sinner and you want Christ, a redeemer, our Lord, the one that comes suddenly and immediately and it takes away the body and the load and the imprisonment of sin in our lives. You raise up your hand. That's what I want. That's what I want. I want that forgiveness. I want that salvation. I want that release from the overpowering sin in my life. Raise up that hand. God bless you. God bless you. And online, do the same thing because today you're free from the stocks and the chains and the fetters of sin or sinfulness. Raise up the hand. As you are raising up the hand, please stand up. Please stand up and say, yes, I am the man. I am the woman. The prison doors of sin already open and all the yokes are broken and the powerlessness I had before. I couldn't overcome before. Now the powerlessness is gone. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Stand up wherever you are. I am praying now at the end of the prayer when you hear the mention of the name of Jesus. Salvation has entered. I said salvation has entered. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus... Well, thank you. What a great God you are, a loving God, you are a compassionate God you are, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, I pray for everyone, everyone here, everyone online, raising up their hands now and wanting the salvation of the Lord, save them in Jesus' name. Break the power of sin from their lives. Set them free. Let them go in peace. No unbelief, no torment, no regrets in life, no condemnation. Set them free to go in the peace of your salvation in Jesus' name. You are saved. By the sacrifice of Christ, you are saved. By the power of our redeeming Christ, you are saved in Jesus' name. Joy in your heart. Peace in your soul. Power in you as a new creature. Go in peace and live free from the sins of the past in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We know you've done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. Our moderating overseer will come now and lead us in this section. Then I'll be coming back for every yoke of sickness, of infirmity, and of demon possession to be taken away from every life tonight. God bless you. Amen. It's a wonderful time. You have received the freedom. You are freed from the bondage of sin. You are no more in the capacity of the enemy. In the prison house of the wicked one. Now, feel free to give all your details to our counselors. Your name, full names. If you have any nickname, what you are popularly called, you give that name. And then your address and your phone numbers. 11 digit give correct information this will help you to enjoy your freedom the covenant will be praying for you and we also will be praying for you assist you and help you to stand and enjoy this freedom so counselors please move around get their details if you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening. There is a link, gckhq.org slash connect, below your player. Visit it and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening via the radio, or television 
and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to this number, plus 234-9154-449263. I take it again. Plus 234-9154-449263. There will be a special meeting lunch hour with Jesus for all those who gave their life to Jesus tomorrow by 3 p.m. at the church men auditorium hall 7 again there will be converse rally special believers banquet for all those who gave their life to Christ during this crusade the program will be on Sunday March 2024 in all our churches globally. More details about this will be sent to you. Our pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. But the Alpha Location Believers Banquet on Sunday, 3rd March, will be at Deeper Life Campground, Rumudara, along East West Road, Port Accord. That's the main church here time 3 p.m caselos please make sure you get detailed information from those who have given their life to christ go through what you have written and make sure you get their name correctly spelled and write in capital letters let your writing be legible enough for us to read and assist them There's nothing wrong. Ask them if you don't know how to spell their name. Ask them to spell their name if they can. Especially their son name. So that you write the correct thing to assist us. Because once you write anything wrongly, you have damaged that card. And you are going to hinder us from assisting the converts. Please get correct information. Like as I said, if you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ, there is a link gckhq.org slash connect below your player. Visit it and fill the form so that we can assist you. And like if you are hearing it or listening via the radio or television, and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, your number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to plus 234 If they are true with you, what you just need to do is start praying. Because very soon, the convener of GCK, a father in the Lord, our Moses today, just as Moses lifted up his hand and Israel prevailed, so also, a father in the Lord, we raise his hand up in prayer for you and you will prevail. He said, he promised us that he will come again to pray for our freedom from sickness, from satanic cup affliction and torment and from satanic oppression so if they are true with you be in the mood of prayer be talking to god don't be looking here and there communicating and say god i'm in your presence i remember what i told you god is present here to present presence to those who are present in his presence don't be in a hurry to go don't rush out after this message. Don't rush out after the prayer. Because God is packaging presents for you. Some have got their own now. Salvation through the message. Others will get healing, deliverance. 
and during the praise worship more we get their own and during the testimony time you will get the last and the best so don't move out of god's presence because god is preparing the best cancel us if you are true please you signify cancel us if you are true you signify Once that are true with you, you join the prayer. I can hear some praying already. Calling on God. I say, God, don't pass me by. All the presence you have prepared for me, I don't want to miss anyone. Lord, I'm here in your presence. That's, supposed, that's what you're supposed to be doing now. Talking to God. This day is the last, but one night... And you won't miss it tonight. Pray and say, Lord, I am here. Cancel us, please, if you are true, signify. A father and the Lord is ready. Okay, to my left, to my right, if we are true, can I hear? Okay, to my right, I can see you. Here at the middle, cancel us, are you true? All right, to my left, are you true? Okay, God bless you. Can we rise as we now call on our father and the Lord to come? and shower blessings upon us pray for us and liberate us from every yoke and bondage amen let's rise up for prayer now remember the prison doors are opened already remember the foundations of your prison they are shaking already and remember that all your bands are loosed. I told you about those people. Their bands were loosed, everyone. Surprisingly, they sat down there. And they stayed there. Until the jailer, the one that put them in prison. Or held them near the prison. Until they woke up. You will escape. You will get up. Wheelchair, you'll discard that wheelchair. Walk his cheek, you'll throw away the crutches. And your blind eyes, what will happen tonight? Open. Deaf ears, what happens tonight? Open. And the insanity, madness, what will happen tonight? Lose him. Let him go. Lose her. Let her go. Lose them. Let them go. What are you? Raise up one hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. And you are praising God tonight. You are praising God tonight. Father, in Jesus' name. We know the foundations of the prison are shaking already. We know all the doors of the prison, they are opened already. We know that all the chains, all the shackles, all the stocks, they are removed already. Your people are loose in Jesus' name. Sickness. You have no business there on anybody. Therefore, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Bring problem, insanity, madness, demon. You don't have any business there anymore. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Pain in your joints, pain in your tummy. Pain at your back, pain at your waist, pain inside, inside the bone. You have no business there anymore. Come out in Jesus' name. <laughs> Cancer, this is my daughter, that my son is not your property. You are not given any chance to remain in that body. 
they had loosed already. Cancer, come out in Jesus' name. Ulcer, come out in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS or any other disease that imprisons the people of God. One by one, to my right, in my front, at my left over there. Hey, look at that. At the back, in the middle, every form of sickness. Come out in Jesus' name. Online. Praise the Lord. You are giving testimony tonight. I command that every challenge, every yoke, every demon, everything the devil, the enemy has put there, called sickness, called disease, called infirmity, be removed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray everywhere, blind eyes be opened, deaf ears be unstopped, dumb tongues speak out. Incurable disease vanish away. Lord, confirm the miracle. Confirm the manifestation. Lord, I pray it is done. It is done. Here, everywhere, it is done. For everyone without exception. Miracle done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody once again will shout. They prayed and sang praises unto the Lord. Before the miracle, they praised the Lord because they knew it was coming. In the midst of the miracle, they praised the Lord. They know it is happening. And then after the miracle, as now we finish the prayer, we we'll praise the Lord because we know you are loosed in Jesus' name. <laughs>